Good morning, Summit Kids. I hope you guys all had a great Easter. We had fun here, but I'm missing all of your faces and doing fun things like Easter egg hunts and activities with you guys. And I just hope you guys had a great time at home too. Well, let's start today off with prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the gift that you have given us in Jesus. And I pray that you help us to become more and more like you, Lord. Help us to pick up those qualities, to be more loving and more kind, and to just show who you are to everybody we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have some fun announcements. Um, we have our daily activities every single day. Mrs. Heather and I are putting up activities for you guys to do at home so that you won't be bored and just stuck doing the same old thing. Most of the stuff you guys already have at home, most of the supplies. I am also doing daily devotionals. So if you're in third through fifth grade, I want you to check those out. Ask your, bug your parents to say, hey, put on the devotional. I wanna see it today. Get your Bible, get a journal, and get a pen, and then just dive right in. You can start at the very beginning on day one, or you could jump in where we're at already. All right, so today our special guest, guest is Corey. She wants to say hi to you. So let's all say hi to Corey. Hey guys, it's Corey. Just wanted to stop by and say hi. Miss your little faces. Hope everything's going well. And... I would love to see you on Thursday at noon at the Zoom meeting. I don't know what else to call it, but anyway, just want to say hi. Hope things are going well. See you soon. Bye. All right. Well, let's jump into our story. So as you know, we've been talking about our big picture question. And the big picture question is so important because it helps us think about what God's up to. What is he up to? So the question is, why did Jesus become human? Do you guys remember? Why did Jesus become human? Jesus became human so that he could follow his father's plan and be obedient to him. And he rescued the sinners through it. So I want you to think about that today as we listen to our story. Last week, we talked about Easter. We talked about the Easter story, Jesus' death and resurrection, and we kind of hopped out of what we've been doing to kind of, you know, talk about that because it's super important. But now we're going to hop back into where we were. So do you guys remember where we were? We were learning about Jesus when he was born. He was a kid and he was dedicated in the temple. And then we learned about his baptism. And then that's when we took a break with Easter. So we're going back now and we're going to actually talk about Jesus again before he went into ministry, he had his baptism, and then he had his temptation. So we're going to learn about his temptation today and what that looked like and how Jesus remained obedient even through the temptation, obedient to God and to follow the Father's plan. So let's check that out today. After Jesus was baptized, God's Spirit led him into the wilderness. Jesus stayed in the wilderness for many days. He prayed to God and thought about God's plan for his life. Jesus did not eat anything while he was in the wilderness, and he was very hungry. The devil came to tempt Jesus. He tried to get Jesus to do wrong things. The devil said, if you are really God's son, tell these stones to become bread. If Jesus used his power to turn the stones into bread, he could eat the bread. Then he wouldn't be hungry anymore. But Jesus said no. He trusted God to give him what he needed. Then Jesus said, this is what the Bible says. Man must not live only on bread, but on all the words God says. Jesus did not sin, so the devil tried again. He took Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem. The devil said, If you are really God's son, prove it. Jump off the top of the temple. God will protect you. Then the devil said, The Bible says God will order his angels to keep you safe, and they will protect you so that you will not even trip on a stone. Again, Jesus said no. 
Jesus knew the devil was trying to trick him by misusing God's words. The devil was being foolish. Jesus said, the Bible also says, do not test God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a high mountain where they could see land stretched out far and wide. The kingdoms and the land were great. The devil said, look, I will give you all the money and power of these great kingdoms. All you have to do is fall down and worship me. Jesus said, no, go away. He said, the Bible says only worship God and only serve God. So the devil went away. Angels came to help Jesus and serve him. In all of these things, Jesus never sinned. The devil tried to get Jesus to sin, but Jesus never sinned. Jesus always did the right thing. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin. When we are tempted to sin, we can ask Jesus to help us say no to sin. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Ashley from Burlington, Wisconsin asks, How do I know if I'm being tempted? You know, Ashley, before I answer your question, let me just talk about what temptation is, just so we can make sure we all are on the same page with that. In today's Bible story, we see that Jesus was tempted, but we know that Jesus never sinned, so that proves to us that there's nothing wrong with being tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. Let's be clear about that. The sin occurs when we give in to temptation. Notice that's what Jesus did not do. Satan tempted him, but Jesus did not go into that temptation and follow through. He said no, and he didn't act on that temptation. So for us, what we wanna do is recognize when we're tempted, like you're asking about today, and then figure out how we can resist temptation. So how do we know we're being tempted? Well, there are a couple things. One, we recognize that something within us is de desiring us to go away from God's word instead of going toward him and obey his word. There's something within us, either because of an external, the world around us, or just the selfishness of our hearts, um, our own desires, that we want to either do what we know the word of God says we do not do, or we don't wanna do what the word of God says we should do. Either of those are temptations to disobey God, to not obey Him fully. And so we just wanna be careful that we recognize when we're having these thoughts, when, when our hearts are moving in us in those directions, and we recognize those are not of God, those are of the world, those are of sin. And so we wanna fight against that. So how can you fight against temptation? Well, there are a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is remember the Word of God. Again, this is how we test everything. And so if you desire to do something that's not in the Word of God that goes against it, you know it's wrong. And so you can fight against that. You can share with other believers. Have somebody hold you accountable. Go to them and say, hey, something within me, I just want to disobey God. I want something that's not in line with His Word. Will you, will you pray with me? And that's the third thing you do. You, you can pray to God. Ask God to help you. Ask God to reveal that what you desire is not the best for you. Ask Him to help change your heart so that you want only what He wants, only what is best for you truly because it's what is His will. So I got a question back for you. What are some strategies you use to fight temptation? For today's missions moment, I get the opportunity to tell you about a very awesome woman of God named Betty Green. She was the very first woman who was a missionary pilot. Now, Betty Green helped to found that awesome missionary resource that we talked about a couple weeks ago, which is Mission Aviation Fellowship. And they, drive, they fly planes to remote villages to bring people the word of God. 
they get to bring them resources and food and water and all that kind of stuff. And they get to tell them amazing stories like the story we learned about today about Jesus's temptation and Jesus pushing through it. So let's hear a little bit more about Betty Green. In 1946, Betty Green made history when she became the first missionary pilot. Her dream was to use airplanes to help people that were hard to reach with cars, boats, or even on foot. She wanted all people to know about Jesus. That's why she helped to start Mission Aviation Fellowship. Her first flight was to Mexico, but Betty flew all over Asia, Africa, and South America to share the gospel. She was an excellent pilot and also knew a lot about fixing airplanes. She was able to safely travel through storms, over mountains, and into tiny islands. In her career, she made close to 5,000 flights to bring missionaries and supplies to hard to reach places. She also flew very sick people to hospitals. Many would have died without her help. Betty Green loved Jesus. And that's why she chose to use her career as a pilot to help others. She flew the love of Jesus into many countries. Many people were helped and many became followers of Jesus because Betty Green was faithful. Betty Green did a lot of amazing things for God. But as you can imagine, with her kind of lifestyle, she had to give, a lot, give up a lot of comforts too. And she also had to say no a lot of times when she wanted to say yeah to things because she just had to pursue God's purpose on her life. And that reminds me of Jesus today in our story when he was tempted. He had to say no and he had to step forward and he had to stand out there even though he was hungry and he was tired, right? I want you guys to think about it. When have you noticed the times that you've been tempted? And then what kinds of things do you do when you're tempted? What kind of things can help you? Maybe talking to a friend or saying a prayer or maybe just start singing your favorite song. There's so many different things that we can do that can help us when we're tempted so that we don't have to make a wrong choice and we can be like Jesus and we can follow God and obey him no matter what because there's a purpose that he has for our lives. Well, our time for today is done here in the video, but you guys have small group stuff to do with your family. So ask your parents to pull that up and then enjoy your at-home small groups. And I hope to see you throughout the week in the daily activities and the devotions. I love you guys. Have a great week.